Super stoked, it's Paddy Mua and we're sitting here with Itzel Delgado. As far as Maui goes, he's probably the last Mohican here with doing a 14 foot stock class. Finishing under an hour the Malika run to Kanaha, which is amazing actually, just like back in the day. And I'm super stoked to have him here because we're gonna hear a lot from Itzel. Let's first start with your a journey around the planet. You started at Carolina Cup, then you went to Italy, Barcelona, Thailand, Okinawa. Yeah, I've, I've had a crazy season. I'm aiming for a couple of long races coming soon. So I started with the Carolina Cup, which I think is a nice long distance race. Yeah. I flew from home to North Carolina. And after that, I I was not planning on doing some of the races in Europe this year because I'm focusing on the other longer races. But then I thought it was fun to go and see my friends and race and have fun in yeah. Europe because there's a lot of level and a lot of people paddling now so it's really good what is going on mm -hmm. with the Euro Tour so really stoked to be able to paddle there I competed in Italy in Mondello and then in Sancti Petri and Barcelona in Spain I finished my my tour in Europe with a win in the Barcelona sprint so that yeah, I was really nice. happy to be over there and do all the races and get to be around with the community it's growing so much the sport over there there's so many kids and young names coming up in the sport so I'm really happy to see that and how it's growing after that I went to Thailand actually to visit some family and do some training over there it's they've got really nice warm tropical place and it's beautiful so training over there was really nice and after I, I jumped over to Okinawa as you said because I was paddling from, from Okinawa Island to, to Yoron which is 30 kilometer downwind race cool like a Japanese M2O kind of thing yeah which you're gonna be paddling soon yeah yeah it's more like a Japanese uh, M2M okay. but really really good uh, it's a uh, 30 kilometers uh, downwind perfect the swell and and everything between the islands is just moving up so you can take every single bit of energy moving up amazing I mean the organization was great everything went on really nice so I was really happy I want to go back and do the O2Y again and after it I got the chance to stay in Okinawa for a little bit more and get to train with Rai and Kotaro from Okinawa as well from Samami Island very cool and that was some good training so I got here ready and fit to Maui had done a lot of downwind training and got to Maliko and yeah, Battle Imua, really happy to take the first place. I did it 58 minutes, it was a good run, I'm happy. Uh, yeah, it was on nice. stock board, a 14 foot being chased by Unlimiteds out on the water, so I was a little freaked out, but I'm still happy to take the win. It was a really good experience and to get to see the community here in Maui, it's my second time here in Maui, but it's my first time competing while here and seeing the community and the growth also of subfoiling and all the people around it it's so much fun the foils are going so fast on, on the downwinders yeah. it's crazy i'm really happy to see that so cool. yeah i'm really stoked of what i'm doing there's there's a lot coming more in the future and yeah i'm happy yeah so you're traveling you're doing the triple crown m2m then m2o and then we were talking earlier a little bit you're gonna go you're gonna do denmark you're gonna have some races in south america eventually going to the ICF now you're traveling Euro tour and internationally how do you choose where to go where do you say this is the race I want to go and why is that important to me yeah so we're going through a weird time in the sport I guess but it's really fun because we have a lot of events a lot to choose yeah so this year I decided that well I've been paddling for 11 years now so it's a long time racing yeah. and doing mostly same type of racing but ever since I started the sport I always look up to Molokai as one of the biggest races and what I would want to do at some point and also 11 city was something that caught my attention really early and I knew I needed to prepare for that race and so I actually didn't take the time before because I was focusing on mm -hmm. short races for ISA format for yeah. technical racing so it was a little different and this year with with everything going on and me just I, I felt it was yeah. a timing to just go and do all the Hawaiian triple crown and then to do the 11 city as well yeah. so yeah. I'm gonna be doing M2M so Maui yeah. to Molokai and after I will do Molokai to Oahu, right. yeah. which is a big challenge. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really happy to be here. And after that, I will finish my preparation for 11 cities. So Very cool. That, that will be one of my major challenges this yeah. year. 
and after that go and contend for a world championship title so very yeah very cool very cool now i've been following and writing down almost on a weekly base uh, the sub world rankings is that something that you pay attention to do you watch that the changes in lead positions um, for sure, as an athlete, it's something I take in mind. I consider to look at it and see what other athletes are, what is going on. Yeah. And I mean, it makes sense. The numbers work. If you count all the races, the system functions. Yeah. But at the, at the end of the day, it's not like there's nothing behind it. It's just giving everyone a position but yeah there's not like a tour going on right so a tour your that's a great very great uh, transition here a tour it's so that's i guess sub world rankings tries to kind of like unify the All sport and get everybody into the same ranking but then at the same time we're kind of missing a a little bit of a, a pro world tour i guess not that we're excluding amateurs but just something that where you guys can make some money where it's the same people exactly uh, as, as you Competing. As you were mentioning, you want to see like the same guys over and over having the chance to rematch at a race like sometime soon. It's similar as to what happens in the Euro Tour, but all around the world, yeah. all, all year long, right? And uh, I guess we used to have that with APP. Looks like we don't. It's not happening quite yeah. that much. Yeah. And we're gonna see where everything goes right right now i'm sticking to the just the origins of of sap and the the main races that are still there because of the local people around it and just yeah. how nature works and what type of craft you can go on the water with i'm really happy with what i'm doing right now this year with the races i've chosen and yeah of course we always have the world championships isa and icf so yeah. that that's always a good place where we can all race together and yeah, most most of the times we're we're gonna get races. I think mm -hmm. hopefully the the sport will still evolve and we we'll get some nice big sponsors or yeah. some people that are really interested because I think we can develop every aspect of the sport. We have so many versions of sub racing that we can have in flat water, in choppy water, waves, snow waves, wind, every Beach type races, of lane racing. Yeah, it's it's races, all it's all distance, there for sure. Distance, so. There's so much to, to milk out of the sport still and it's so accessible for everyone around yeah. the world to get to just paddle, to get on a board and move around. Yeah. So the sport still develop it's still developing, yeah. it's still growing in the in big places. Uh, right now I'm doing a lot of work in Peru and my parents are helping me there too. We have a club where we introduced sub as a sport in the club firstly for this year and now we have a group of 15 kids on between 9 and 15 years who are training three times a week and paddling and cool. racing with each other looking forward to compete internationally so I'm really happy about that and how the sport is growing back home in Peru for me and to see it, that there's still youth uh, really involved in sub, I'm I'm really happy. The amount of kids we that were downwind, uh, downwinding from yeah. Maliko to Kanaha today was was amazing. Yeah. Most of most of the field was young young guys that are getting into the sport and get introduced into downwinding, and it was great to see that. Very cool. And as you said, like you're you're a Valverse athlete from downwinding to flat water tech races, making medals and podiums. And there's so much more to come. And I want to say we're looking forward to see more of you, and we're going to look forward to see you guys in the next video.